All right. So let me share my screen. And okay, here we go with all my 9 million tabs open. So I wanted to talk about roadmap and like, I talk about the different phases all the time, but sometimes like seeing it laid out as a roadmap can be helpful. The part with the roadmap that is confusing is that everyone's could be different, but I'm going to give like a couple of different scenarios and then how like we would kind of backtrack on what your roadmap would look like. So we, all of us did this part together. So we have our step one, which would be our goal setting, three wise deep. You guys did that. We did our highest version in self. So we're just like aligning ourselves to this like process that we want a specific outcome to, right? And then step two is our fat loss phase. This fat loss phase could be anywhere from six weeks. Like most of the time, somebody's gonna need probably at least six weeks to see the results that they want because it takes our bodies a little bit to see changes that aren't just like water weight from removing something or eating a little less or moving. So six weeks to six months, like somebody could be in a very small deficit and see changes for a long time and they could feel really great over this. So it doesn't have to be like, I, this program is 12 weeks, but it doesn't have to be a 12 week thing. Um, that was another thing I was going to talk about. I have a lot of people that continue coaching on after the 12 weeks, they just roll into a mastermind group. We do a call on Tuesdays still. And then all of the check-ins and everything look the same. So a lot of people will just like continue this process on because sometimes 12 weeks just isn't long enough to get to where we want to go. And having feedback and support is really helpful. So that was phase could be anywhere from six weeks to six months. From there, you might get to your end goal in one fat loss phase, but it's really important to know how to reverse out of it so you're not eating at a low calorie forever. And there's a very smart way to do this. And we can do this in a way that you're maintaining progress and getting more energy and eating more food and all of these things. But this is where I see a lot of people go wrong is because we don't strategically reverse out of our fat loss phase. And we either try to live there for a long time and then we get super burnt out and then we go from doing all the things to none of the things, or we don't slowly reverse out and pay attention to things. We just like stop tracking and doing our habits and all of the good stuff. And then so our fat loss results kind of can reverse back to what they were before because we're not doing the things that we were before. So there is like a plan when it comes to reversing that's really important. Um, and sometimes we need to reverse for a little bit, maintain the results that we did get, or maybe like life is crazy, stress is crazy. And we're like, fat loss is not my priority right now, but my health is my priority. And I want to set myself up for success for when I do go into a fat loss phase. This is important. Um, this can also be hard, but it's like, we don't just focus on nutrition when we are in a fat loss phase. Like we should be focusing on nutrition all the time. And then that way, when we are wanting to change our body composition or we have a big performance goal or something like very specific, we just like turn the knobs a little bit to get those results. But it's not like a, I'm focusing on all the things and I'm not focusing on any of the things because that's when it gets us into a rough spot that we're not super stoked about. So go back to the beginning. Step one, goal setting. Then we could go into a fat loss phase. Then we could reverse. Then we could go into another fat loss phase. So I'm going to give a couple of examples on this. This would look like my starting point. I'm at 34% body fat. Okay. And I go into a... 16 week fat loss phase and I get down to, so that's four months. I get down to like 26% body fat. 
say in theory, that's like 8%. That's high on the percentage loss, but we'll just go with it for storytelling. So we get down to 26% body fat. From here, our calories were low because we we're in a fat loss phase, which makes sense. We have to be in a calorie deficit. We reverse our calories back up to a higher place. We feel really good. We have all the energy. And then we're like, okay, I really want to hit my goal of 23% body fat or whatever it is. I'm making these things up. But we reverse out so our bodies are in a happier place. We had a mental break from dieting. We have so much energy. Our sleep is good. We just kind of got a break from like being super like strict with things, um, even though macros are pretty flexible. But you know what I mean? Like eating less can be hard when you're like, okay, I'm hungry. And then I'm making things like kind of fit into my day. So you have a break from that in your reverse. And then you go into your next phase. And then that might be another eight weeks or so to lose that next 3% that you want to lose. So that's how like fat loss phase one, and then like a level two fat loss phase. That's what that means by that. And then you would still need to reverse out. Like if you go back into a fat loss phase, you would need to reverse back out, build up calories as high as possible with minimal scale change, make sure that your metabolism is happy. And then there's stuff that we start to throw into this point. So we like reverse out and then you can maintain your results from there. Or sometimes you're like, okay, well, I lost the body fat that I want to lose. Now I really want to like gain lean muscle and I want to see more shape in my body, or I really want to like be able to lift heavier in the gym, or, you know, I want my glutes to be bigger, or I want my legs to be more defined, like whatever it is, or I want to go hike this big thing. So we could go into a build phase from there or go into a place where we're like, I want to be able to maintain my results and really grasp like intuitive eating so where you're not like tracking macros all the time and calories all the time so there's like different things for each of this right now we're gonna reverse it a little bit because not everyone has to start at a fat loss phase not everyone should start at a fat loss phase um some people come to me and they've like already been eating a little low. So step one might be to reverse their calories as high as possible. While the scale might be trending up a little bit or it might stay the same, everyone's different. Um, and then going into a fat loss phase with higher numbers. So like these steps can be reversed. Like you could go into step one goal setting, step two could be reversed, then go into a fat loss phase then reverse back, then maintain our build. Or some people start with a build first. So it really depends, but there's like all sorts of way that you can do this and move this around. So it's not like one or the other. And sometimes it's more than one phase. Um, yeah. And sometimes like going into a build phase is necessary for you to be able to go into a fat loss phase with higher calories or to see this shape that you want to see or maybe have more energy or lots of variables. But that's kind of how this process could look. And this roadmap could be a two-year process. This roadmap could be a 16-week process. It really just depends on where you're at right now, what your day-to-day -day looks like, your stress levels, your sleep, all of those things. And then like, you could like move these around depending on where you're at. So like, if you're in a fat loss phase right now and you're like, I'm ready to be done with my fat loss phase, I mentally need a break. Then we would just start to reverse you out. So you're at a place where you can maintain and it feels a little easier. And then if you're like, but eventually I have fat loss goals, I have body composition goals, then we could like dive into that later. But this is all like, interchangeable yeah that's all I have well okay one other thing I was thinking about this today on making choices about things 
This is really hard. But if you're in a situation and you're kind of like, I have these goals and then this thing is here, whatever it is, I always ask myself, like, is this going to get me closer or further away from my goal? And if it's closer, then I'm like, okay, heck yes. If it's further away, then I'm like, I have to like have that conversation with myself. Like, okay, I'm choosing to be okay that I'm like taking just, maybe it's not even a step back. Maybe it's just like, it's not progress towards your goal, but it's like just owning that that's going to happen and then not stressing about it later. Because that's, that's what can like, kind of dwell on us a lot and add a little more stress is if we're like beating ourselves up about something or, you know, whatever it is, feeling guilty about something. It's really just like, okay, can't, will this like decision get me further or closer away? This probably won't get me closer to my goal, but I really want it right now. And I'm just making that choice. And then tomorrow is a new day. And I'm, I'm just like here for that. That's easier said than done, but I try to <laughs> talk myself through that process if I'm in that situation. I like it. I need to hear that. Oh, good. Okay. okay good. Yeah. I have to do this with like work stuff too. So yeah. Good. Okay. That's all we got. If you have questions, let me know. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Go at your protein. Have a good night. Okay, bye.